Hello everybody, in this video I want to review the history of a transformative technology called virtualization. But first, let's see when it really began. Back to the mainframe development era by the IBM company at the end of 1960 and the beginning of 1970, there were two big concerns how much the physical infrastructures of the IT world will grow and also in most of Unix based systems how to share the computing resource between many services or even users. So this idea has been originated by the following challenges. How to effectively use the external capacities like big unused memory or idle processors with respect to one of the mentioned concerns how to use the physical servers without have its physical ownership and in conditions of a disaster has been occurred can we move or migrate our services regardless of efficient usage of physical resources this mentioned challenges bring up some goals for example, faster service provisioning includes all steps of installing and implementing in front of traditional methods of the service providing, how to achieve the better methods of the data center management and its critical components like servers and databases, and how to get a perfect IT mobility in response to the business continuity. A perfect answer for these challenges is the virtualization and this concept is achieved only by the hypervisor technology. Hypervisor or virtual machine monitor has a primary target. Construction of the virtual components like the virtual machines, virtual adapters or controllers, virtual switches and etc. By deploying the hypervisor platform, it's possible to run concurrently multiple guest OS inside a single physical host through running the virtual machines. Host, in our terminology, is the physical system that hypervisor software is installed on top of it. More precisely, the hypervisor is a software that acts as a new abstraction layer to separate operation system and its applications from the underlying physical hardware. Besides running separate virtual machines, the hypervisor lets the host share its resource between those virtual machines and also provides an infrastructure for managing resource requests. A hypervisor allows a host to support running different types of guest OS into the virtual machine like Linux, Windows and so on. But exactly which types of physical resources we mean as the shared components? By default we can say everything. But in the design concept we usually mention these important hardware components. CPU or processor, RAM or memory, disk or storage, network or bandwidth. There are two primary type of hypervisor. Type 1 or bare metal and type 2 or hosted. As you can see in the bare metal architecture, the hypervisor will be installed and run directly on top of the hardware layer and manage the host resources and handle the virtual machine request without any additional software. So in this type, there is no need to install a separate OS on the physical host because the hypervisor itself will respond to any operations related to this area and acts as well as both of operation system and virtualization software.
But unlike the bare metal in type 2 or hosted, it's required to set up an operation system on the physical host before hypervisor installation process. So in this type, the hypervisor should be set up as a piece of software and require an independent OS on top of the hardware layer to act as the virtualization platform on top of the OS layer. Any hardware problems or software issues that lead to the host OS failure will make the hypervisor software stop working. Then all virtual machine will not work anymore. VMware ESXi, Citrix Zen Server, Red Hat KVM, Oracle VM Server, Microsoft Hyper-V and Nutanix AHV are the most popular hypervisor type 1 solutions. VMware Workstation, Oracle VM VirtualBox, Microsoft Virtual PC are some of known hypervisors type 2. But what is really a virtual machine? And it consists of exactly which components? First of all, you should know the virtual machine functionalities must not have differed from a physical machine. And when we run multiple VMs inside the host, each of them has its own guest OS and applications. However, the VM acts like an independent physical system. From the host perspective, a VM is nothing really more than just some files reside on the host's storage that has its dedicated configuration and log files and also hardware resource including of NVRAM, virtual disk and so forth. When you power on a VM, one or more processes will be added in the hypervisor OS level and some new VM files will be automatically generated on the VM's related directory on the storage. In comparison to the old or traditional server deployment methods, there are many benefits on running servers in the virtual machine structure, include the following points. Using existing hardware resource with higher rate of efficiency, improve the speed rate of service provisioning respect to the virtual machine deployment, Simplify servers and data center managing operations inside a unified management console. Protect against any type of disaster recovery in the software or hardware components of the data center. Because we don't need to provide more physical servers for new services and applications, so there is no need more financial facilities. There is another method of deploying virtualization solutions called nested VMs that has more complexity in the establishment procedure. When a VM is a hypervisor itself or has hypervisor software installed on its guest OS, if you want to know exactly in this structure we will deploy two hypervisors that one of them will be set up as a virtual machine inside the other one and while it can act as the host for some VMs, it's still a virtual machine for another host. Both of hypervisor can be on the same or different virtualization products, but remember to read their installation documents before the planning to deploy them. At last, it's good to know running many large virtual machines on a single physical host can lead to an unstable performance. So keep in mind, we should always maintain a suitable balance rate between total number of running virtual machines and existing physical hosts. 
I hope this video be informative for all who beginners in the virtualization world. Until the next video of this series, goodbye.